Destiny 2 is about to get a big expansion at the end of this summer that looks to bring back players and introduce new ones, but that doesn't mean the Crucible isn't still full of Guardians showing off their skills and their loot or grinding away those public events in the EDZ. Plenty of gamers are still kicking ass and chewing bubblegum in the tower in Destiny 2. Hi, I'm Alpha Lance with the leaderboard and we're going to tell you all about the 12 people you'll meet in Destiny 2. <laughs> The Veteran. These players have been around since the original Destiny's beta phase. They've seen it all, been through all the ups and downs, have all the pre-order bonuses and special edition items. These were the players grinding away at the loot caves of old, the ones who remember the dark times when Engrims could actually downgrade when unlocked, and were there for the reign of the Galahorn. They'll likely be good, but just remember, time does not always equal skill. They are the Veteran. You'll likely know when you're playing with a veteran because just like a vegetarian, they'll make sure to tell you all about it. And similar to vegetarians, they'll either bring it up nonchalantly or take it to the extreme and tell you about how you're missing out on something you can't really change right now. Or the opposite, and they'll tell you how great you have it because you're not stuck at level 29 forever. The veteran almost qualifies as a hardcore Bungie fan, but for some PlayStation fans, Destiny was their first Bungie title, so they hold no allegiance to Bungie's Halo days. The Historian. This player is a huge nerd for lore, and I swear I'm saying that with all the love that I can, believe me. The Historian knows all the history of Destiny. They recognize every name that shows up in lore tidbits, or any small reference goes offhandedly mentions after a scan, like Dredgenior, Pahanan, Oros, or Ariana 3. These are the players that poured over every Grimoire card in Destiny 1 and cried the hardest when they didn't come back in Destiny 2. Which personally, I can't blame them, because if you go back and read some of them, they're actually very beautiful written. Like at the very least go back and read the Taken enemy cards because they explain how Oryx coerced his foes to his side rather than force them and they're almost poetic. The Historian can be a great asset to your team, not so much because they bring a tactical advantage, but because they can tell you all about the characters and moments you know nothing about. They become an asset in the fight against boredom. Okay, I know that sounds bad, but what I'm trying to say is they can be very entertaining. Watch out though, if you listen to a Historian long enough, they'll transform you into one. It's thanks to these players who recognize the names, discuss with their fellow sleuths on forums and reddits, and pay attention to tiny details that we finally, potentially, found out the identity of the Exo Stranger, a character our next player wouldn't even know. The Newcomer. When Destiny 2 came out on all consoles, well, not Nintendo, sadly, it brought in a lot of new people. This was the first time PC players could join the fight, albeit over a month after Xbox One and PlayStation 4 players. Bungie even accounted for these newcomers by having certain dialogue change if you had a Destiny 1 save file or not. So first off, let me just say, welcome to the fight, Guardians. We're happy to have you. It's just also sad to think about how you'll never enjoy the glory of pod racing, or, you know, sparrow racing. The OG Destiny had this fun, limited time event where players got warped to a racetrack with nothing to do but run over Vex and boost and bank as fast as they could, and I mean, can you blame us with how awesome Sparrows felt? You'll probably hear people complain that it still hasn't come back yet, like right now. So just look up a YouTube video after this one to know why we're talking about it. Anyways, the newcomer is not a bad player by default, I'm not saying that. In fact, they can be very good, very invested in Destiny 2 even, but just means that they'll never know the great era of Dinklebot. The name Crota doesn't mean anything to them, they'll always know what it's like to wield a sword. Papa Oryx probably just sounds like a boogeyman from a day long past, and they won't know the Reef until Forsaken comes out in September. Which also means they probably don't know about the Queen, Mara Sov. The Number Cruncher. On the polar opposite side of the historian is the player that cares nothing about fiction and history, but instead, cold, hard math. I'm talking about the number cruncher. Seen in both PvP as well as PvE environments, these players judge everything on an effectiveness scale and use the subject that killed you in school to kill you in your free time. Those monsters. The number cruncher has worked out the best balance of mobility, resilience, and recovery in their armor loadout, how best to combo abilities, and what guns have the highest damage per second. These players can rule in crucible matches if their skill matches up to their brain power, and if you have a number cruncher with you on a strike or raid, well, you're in for a treat. Sure, some of them hit the forum so hard that there's no fun left, but hey, maybe that's just their version of fun. What if they're a fun vampire for the rest of us? If they're having fun, that, that makes it okay, right? The AFK. Also known as the, oh, hold on, one, one second, one second. Uh-huh. Yep. And, okay, back. What a miss. The AFK is potentially the easiest to spot because he's literally doing nothing in-game. Typically because they're trying to do too much in real life. 
Maybe they're away from keyboard or controller to go to the bathroom, sure. But after a few too many times where one of your friends decide he has to respond to that text, it can get very annoying. I put my life on hold for a few minutes to play Crucible, now put your phone away before Papa Shaq sees you and takes it. It can be funny to find a player on the enemy team who's gone AFK, sure, but you know it's annoying when the enemy team finds your player that's been trying to farm the Crucible. Plus, as much as less targets for the enemy team also means less guns for your team. And then there's the AFK players you find in the PvE areas. These players are probably waiting for a friend or an event to start, so of course there's only one thing you can do. Nudge them off a ledge. Or, I mean, I guess you could just emote in front of them until they notice you, and that would be more polite. But hey, at least when they're in the public area, they're typically not affecting your fun. The Contradiction. This player is a pessimist who you'll most likely find in the comment section, or rather, will make you feel like you're in the comment section. This player will loudly complain about the current state of Destiny 2, with things like, Ugh, Destiny 2 is so dead. Even though they are actively playing it. Right now. Yeah, that's the Contradiction player. The Contradiction may be simply grinding for the next event or playing with you or a friend because they're bored, but you just want to tell them to try to enjoy themselves. Maybe they're trying to be pessimistic to be cool, or they're lying to themselves about how much fun they're actually having, but I guess it's, you know, as long as they're playing, they're doing their part for the Destiny community. I guess. The Contradiction player may be the veteran just turned cynical, or they may even be going through the same motions many Minecraft or Stardew Valley players go through, talking about everything wrong with the game or what's difficult, but still never quite giving up on it. The PC Transplant. When Destiny 2 announced it was coming to PC, players rejoiced. A new pool of players would join the ranks as guardians and fight against the darkness. Or whatever they call it now, you know, the never-ending waves of enemies attacking the Earth from the dark reaches of space. But unfortunately for many, Destiny's multiplayer got hit with some very experienced players who showed just how good they were at clicking on heads. We call these the PC transplants. Now most of these players probably came from CSGO, PUBG, Fortnite, Team Fortress 2, Overwatch, so we're just gonna give them a general term and say PC player transplant. Now these PC player transplants coming over to Destiny 2 are probably gonna whoop the floor with the Destiny 1 players coming from console to PC for Destiny 2. Godspeed. Unlike the number cruncher, the PC transplant's identity is heavily based on skills rather than gear. Though if these players fuse into one, the result can be very deadly. These players play Crucible almost exclusively, only completing PvE areas for more loot, and they aren't really too interested in completing raids or strikes except for that rare gear that comes with it. The Soft Core Meanwhile, our next player has no intention of playing Crucible. The softcore player truly loves the mindless, endless enemies of Destiny 2 and feeling like an overwhelming force of nature. They may have had a long day at work, be a parent with only a little bit of time for games before bed, or are new to video games. Regardless, there's no shame in being the softcore player. Don't let the internet tell you otherwise. Player versus environment areas are by far the majority of the game, after all. These players range in skill, but with Destiny's rather forgiving system, they can be okay until they get too strong and raids, or the difficulty skyrockets through the roof. Maybe these players will take on those challenges, sure, but they may not want to invest the time to possibly fail and spend hours going through the same jump puzzle. Video games are meant to be fun and relaxing, so there's no harm in letting them find their own way of doing that. The softcore is also in many ways the opposite of the number cruncher, as they won't have time to look up the best gear, but they also don't need to, and will play whatever's the most fun. Sure, grenade launchers aren't the best heavy weapon, but lobbing explosives is always a good time. The softcore players can sometimes become AFK players, because they needed to change a diaper or something else very important. But luckily, they won't affect you most of the time. At worst, they'll probably be helping you in a public event when the controller drops. And hopefully, they'll have our next player nearby. The support. Fighting some big baddie? Looks like you could use some more firepower. Do you know how to trigger the heroic public event? No? Okay. Well, I'll teach you. Oh. Oh, uh, looks kinda like you died. No worries, I'll just stop to revive you. The support player doesn't care that there isn't a healer class on Destiny 2, because they'll make it work anyway. Throwing down rifts or picking abilities that buff nearby allies, the support is always looking out for their fellow players, sometimes even more than themselves. Knowing the value of teamwork as well as morale, they are the best guardian you can ask to have by your side. They don't even know you, but they do know you could always use a little support. Maybe these players have had a really bad day, or maybe they've had a really good day. Maybe they're desperate to make friends, Whatever the reason, you should appreciate the boost. Of course, that's not to say these angels aren't wielding flaming swords. The support player can totally be a skillful marksman that will make your enemies tremble in their boots. But the fist that pummels can also be the hand that guides. The rusty ones. 
often new players or sometimes just ones who've gone on to other games for quite some time, the Rusty Ones are players that struggle with control systems and maps. The Rusty Ones can be seen wandering on maps looking for their next objective on foot, unaware of how they can call in their sparrow, or they can also be spotted using their supers at inopportune times like when there's no enemies around, throwing a grenade at your feet, or letting loose a heavy weapon shot by accident, hopefully. They're not necessarily noobs or bad players, just maybe unsure of how to pull off the task at hand, or maybe it's been a while and they're not quite sure how the control works anymore and they're like, I, I, there's a thing I, I want to do, but I don't remember how to do it. We've all had those misclicks. Just laugh it off and move on. There's more fish in the sea and there's more heavy ammo to pick up later. Just hope that whatever rust got on their gears clears up soon and that they're able to get back to chugging along. Or that if they are new, that they'll learn quickly. The rusty ones can be the softcore players, but this is understandable as more often than not the softcore players put their real lives above being guardians, which again is very understandable and if anything kind of more noble. So they may also just be an AFK player who's picked up their controller or dropped their controller and let off their super at an inopportune time, or maybe fired a rocket into the back of your head. No worries. Before we get on to our next player, I want to pause real quick and remind you to enter our ongoing console giveaway by going over to the leaderboard.nyc slash giveaway. We can't hook you up with that special edition limited time event Destiny 2 PlayStation 4, but we can hook you up with, you know, like a regular PS4 for free. That ain't bad. <laughs> the Collector. Everyone knows that player who complains that they don't have enough room in their vault. The collector is always looking to complete a set of some kind. Maybe they're trying to get everything in the game, maybe they're just trying to get every exotic or complete some outfit, something like that. Whatever the list they're filling out, the majority of their collection is likely going to sit in their vault, where luckily it can't get dust. Likely seen repeatedly in the same area of the galaxy after some drop, whether that be a planet, a nightfall strike, or a crucible. They will stay in one area until they finally find their darling. You can also replace armor or weapons here with achievements and nothing really changes. Though with only 13 achievements, an achievement-based focus collector may have it pretty easy. The collector may very well be a historian hoping to find all the exotics and read their lore, or finding certain exotics with their favorite lore. The softcore would also be great as a collector as they are trying to find some way to have fun in Destiny 2 that doesn't get into competitive gunplay. Either way, they're looking toward the end game, and until the next expansion comes out and everything changes. The dedicated. Lastly, these are the players, no, the fans that are in it for the long haul. The dedicated Destiny 2 fans that will follow Bungie through hell or high water. No matter how many people tell them that Warframe is just Destiny but better and free, pfft, these players are the hardcore fans, or at least the ones that put down money for the season pass. No matter what comes, they'll be along for the ride. This may also be the veteran, someone who's put a lot of time into the series already. Whatever their reason, with Forsaken on its way, we'll see if their dedication is rewarded and players do come running back, or if the dedicated players will just continue to play together without us. There are plenty of Guardians all across the galaxy, and we definitely didn't cover all of them in one video. Tell us what kind of players you come across in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to The Leaderboard, your home for video game facts.